Hey everybody, Brian King here, calling live from my back. <laughs> you know, I'm all about being honest. I'm all about transparency. And I've spent the majority of the day in bed today, uh, having a relationship with a tennis ball on my back. I've had back spasms for the past couple weeks, and today they are starting to wrap around my side, and they're pretty bad. So I've been taking it easy and seeing what I can do to relieve them. It's one of the things that comes with MS. It's, you know, what are you going to do? You, you adjust. I've still got work to do, and I've still got clients to serve, and I can rest and work. And that's one of the beauties of technology is I've been kind of meeting both in the middle. But... I just wanted to give you some context about why you're looking at my pillow instead of the back wall in my office. In any case, one thing I see a lot going on is this push towards positivity at the, expense, at the expense of honesty when it comes to disabilities. You know, I mention all the time, I talk about the challenges I have, I talk about the way I reframe what it means to have a disability. And there are many people out there that think, well, you know, I tell my child that they have abilities and that they can do anything, and that's great, but you don't want them to deny the fact that they have legitimate challenges that they need to be honest about, that they need to accommodate. You don't want them to minimize and pretend like there are not some challenges that come along with having ADHD or having Asperger's or dyslexia or anything else. It is so unfair for you to say, oh, don't be negative, don't look at it that way. Remember that you're brilliant and you can do this and you can do that. And yeah, it may be true, but there's still stuff they're gonna bump up against and you've got to allow them to have that conversation. However, and this is the however, you don't want them to be so afraid of what those challenges may bring that they stop dead in their tracks. Let me give you some context on this. I was on a wonderful conference call today with a couple other people that have various challenges and we get together once a week to talk about what it means to have disabilities and run a business at the same time and how we prevent that from getting in the way. And one thing I shared is how with the MS, I really held myself back for a while. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go out because I was so afraid of falling. And falling is a reasonable concern when you have legs that don't cooperate. And I've had several falls since uh, the diagnosis. And when I fall, it is not graceful. I fall hard and I often end up on the floor for a couple minutes while I get you know, let the, the shock of the fall dissipate, make sure I'm not hurt terribly, and then I get back up. Well, it was brought to my attention by my significant other that I was letting that fear get in the way of life. I wasn't going out. I wasn't seeing what my true limitations, my true capacity was, because I was so afraid of falling that I just opted out. Well, once it was brought to my attention, you know, I'm not one that likes to have fear get in the way. So I said, wait a minute, if this is fear, I really need to challenge it. I need to see what I'm truly capable of. So I allowed myself to start getting out again, to seeing just what my limit was. And what I found in many situations was what I thought was my limit wasn't. I was able to go further. I was able to last longer. I had more stamina in certain situations than I thought I truly had. And that allowed me to push the boundary of fear, to challenge it, to prove it wrong. However, there were also those situations where I literally, I didn't have it in me. And I knew that I needed to say no. I needed to say, set a boundary and say, you know what, I'm going to pass on this opportunity to go out. I really don't feel up to it. But when I said that, I had some point of reference for it. It wasn't just an all-purpose, no, I'm afraid, I'm not going to go out. It was after testing my limit repeatedly to know what I was truly capable of 
and then say, you know what, based on the experience of pushing myself, this is a situation where I have got to opt out because my body is just not up to it. And this is something that it is really, really important to allow your children to say no sometimes, but based on some experience, based on knowing that I've stretched myself repeatedly in many directions, in many situations, and I can tell you from experience that this is one of those situations where I've just got to say no. So it's healthy for them to understand what their legitimate challenges are so they can discuss how to work around them, how to accommodate them, and then push forward. But to pretend like the challenges aren't there is irresponsible of you as a parent. To always poo-poo any conversation about them by saying, you have, abil- you have abilities, child, my son, my daughter, you can do anything. That may be true. I've accomplished a great deal in my life, but it isn't by always emphasizing my abilities and pretending like I don't have disabilities. I do. I have many disabilities. But I'm also very resourceful when it comes to finding resources, building relationships, learning strategies that allow me to succeed anyway. And I've got to be able to talk about how real those disabilities are before I can come up with those solutions. So can you have abilities and disabilities at the same time? Yes. And it's okay to think about it that way. I have abilities, I have brilliance, I have gifts, but I also have disabilities and it's not negative to think about it that way. It's practical, it's reasonable as long as I am not stopped dead in my tracks by the discussion of my disabilities. Because by admitting to what my disabilities are, that opens up the conversation to what resources are available to me to allow me to succeed anyway. So that's my two cents on that. I see some of you chiming in. Thank you so much. I'm gonna comment. I'm gonna respond to your comments in just a minute. Thank you so much for watching. If there is somebody in your life that can benefit from this, please share it. Until we talk again, this has been Brian. Thanks for being you.